Chris Chapman here coming at you from the Rusty Nuts Model Shop with a tutorial. Been getting a lot of questions and people asking me how I prep my uh, bodies for paint since I don't use a uh, primer on them with the acrylic paints. The uh, best way to show you or let you know is just to show you. I've got a test body here you guys have seen in the past. You know my sponging of the rust colors and things on this. Um, there's different ways. I start off typically you can see I have a seam right here. You know, I need a little more light on that side of that. Let me open up my curtain here. There. You can see this seam here. One thing that I like to do, take a black Sharpie. Wherever you have a seam, run your Sharpie down. That lets you know where it's at. So you'll always remember I got to send that off. So we're going to focus on this front quarter panel here. I'm going to use some uh, coarse sanding sticks. You get this here from, uh, oh there it is. <laughs> you get these from Sally's or all a dollar. These here came from Dollar General. You can typically go and get a two or a four pack at Dollar General for, you guessed it, a buck. So, not going to help out now. This will be brighter. So what we do is I just use the edge of it. I'm going to sand that seam off of there. And the way to tell is you sand it until the... Uh, Sharpie's gone. That lets you know that you sanded the whole thing. Now it's on a roll right here, so you got to remember to kind of roll your your sanding stick so that you make sure that it gets the whole area. You don't want that to flatten out. And this is actually going to be kind of nice. It seems gone. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it either. Let the sandpaper do the work, not your fingers. And you just lightly sand the whole area. That's what I like about these. You cut them on an angle like that and it works for getting up against trim and stuff where you don't want to actually get into the trim and remove detail. I'll go ahead and get this upper area sanded down here real quick. This is an area that usually needs attention on most cars. This has got a couple of areas. Now I also picked these here up at the dollar store. They're little brushes, makeup applicators. And I got a bigger one as well. I use these to dust off the little particles. It also helps get the uh, loose particles out of the <coughs> yeah, excuse me out of the doors and stuff. Now looking at this, it needs a little bit more sanding right up along here. We're just going to take it to the door seam for right now. Then you inspect it. Now, you can use 400 grit sandpaper. You can use these sanding sticks. <coughs> They've got lighter coarse or not so coarse grits. 
finer grits and those work great you know if we're coming up later and cleaning up and stuff they've also got these little uh, sanding sticks they got really coarse this is like a 320 then it goes to 400 on the dark side this side here drops down to a 600 of which is typically where I start at then you've got your dark 800 on the blue thousand on your light blue and then you got a white that is rated around 1200 grit now you can use these little sanding sticks I've got a couple of low spots and this is what I'm going to show you that you got to take care of but these sanding sticks are great for getting into tight places now you can go and get yourself some uh, regular sanding files from the dollar store and then you can cut these up into little that's all that is these here were bought at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby and I've had them for quite a while and you can see here now that I've got it done as I roll it up here see that little shiny spot right there that means there's a low spot you can also see some right up along the cowl right there see how it's darker than that little white chalky light blue color there's also one up here mm -hmm on the end those are low spots and you can see the side of it's pretty good but we do have one right here the rest of the side looks to be in really good shape got a little bit right there too right there you can see that darker blue it's the reason I'm using the blues so that you can see it a little bit better now, turn around and you get it all nice and dust free again. Typically, with that seam on there, I did this at a 400 grit. Typically, I would have started with 600. And the reason I do that is because it's just to show me where the low spots are. Sand just enough of it. To where you can see it now it's a lot of times you could turn around on a little ones like this right here you can keep sanding this whole ledge down or edge down to where that goes away the problem with that is it's going to flatten this you want to keep that roll in it so I'm going to fill it up on the sides right here if you have a low spot sand it down just a little bit to see if it goes away and if it's still if it's significant a fairly large one you're going to want to fill it up you can fill it there's a bunch of different uh putties and stuff out there that you can use and on this video i'm not going to go into the putties because a lot of other people have done videos on what they do and stuff i'm going to do a technique that i learned a while back and we will go ahead and start off with an obvious one right down here I'm gonna go with some medium super glue or CA glue and I'm just gonna kinda rub that right along that seam right there where it was showing the blue spot you don't need a lot I've shown this technique before on other videos. Now you can see I've got the uh, CA glue on there. This is baking powder. Some people use baking soda. Baking powder uh, works just as good. You sprinkle that on there. And now we got to give it a <coughs> couple of minutes, two, three minutes. Is all you want that on there for. 
I am going to give a warning. If this goes four or five minutes, you're going to be chiseling this off or using some major files. This stuff will cure up hard as a rock this way to where it's going to require files like this or even these. <laughs> You don't want to have to pull out the big guns. That's a lot of work, and I mean a lot of work. So, you want to make sure that you keep it fairly quick, within a couple of minutes. Do one little section at a time, and you can take this off, lightly brush it, And you can see what it's looking like now. You can see the uh, little ridges and stuff on it. You want to take your sanding stick and go ahead and get that sanded off. It'll kind of gum up a little bit. But that's okay because that's what the is on the high spot. And it's better to do it this way and add a little bit more filler as opposed to having to chip and chisel this whole thing out. And it looks like it needs just a little bit more right up in this area. So we'll put a little bit more on. We'll let that sit. Now again, it doesn't need to be for very long. Little areas at a time. <coughs> And I have had a lot of people ask me why I don't edit my videos and make them shorter. Because I drink my coffee. So if I'm editing, I can't drink my coffee. But the main reason is because is I want to show you what it takes time-wise, material-wise, and prep-wise, everything. So you guys will see exactly what it takes and how long it takes for the process of this to be done and I see a lot of videos where you're watching it and they're like well I'm gonna take a break here now when I get into something long and different I'll definitely put a pause on it but right when they're getting into it and stuff it's like okay well I'm gonna go ahead and paint this here and stuff and I'm gonna use these colors and stuff and I'll be right back and then they come back and they got all these fancy colors and the pinstriping, but they didn't show you how they did it or how long it took to do it and stuff. And on these tutorials, that's stuff that I like to show just so that you, when you go to try this, you know and you understand what it's going to take to get this done. And that there's taking that right off. Very nice. Now we'll turn around and get my wider sanding stick. Kind of smooth that out just a smidgen. Now, you can see, if I get the light on it right, you can see where I've got the main hole sealed in there. There's a little bit of a color change because of the uh, CA glue. 
It's actually white, but for some reason it's showing up here kind of dark. But that right there is smooth. Now once you go through your whole body, you get the entire body completely done. And all prep. See, I mean, there's still a lot. Look at that line all the way up here. That right there. See, and I usually use a super glue technique for when I'm doing big gaps. You know, around headlight things and stuff, you know, where you have to put it in there, let it dry, sand it down a little bit, put more in and fill in gaps. This kind of application, it's actually better to use putty, such as this perfect plastic putty. And that stuff's great and it doesn't take long. I can just let it dry overnight and it's ready to go. But we've got that set up right there. And so from that point, again, I will take 600 grit sandpaper. I've already sanded it down with the 400. And typically, see, and I take my sandpaper cut them up into little squares. I'll put them into a bag marked 600 so I know. There's a little tiny square of it. Then you go into it with your 600 grit. Lightly, lightly, lightly. And some people like to wet sand this. It depends on the model, what I'm doing and stuff. Sometimes I'll wet sand it if it's really bad. But for the most part, I just use a sandpaper. So, you lightly go over it with the 600 grit paper. And this is how you're going to do the whole thing now that you've got it all fixed and cleaned up. Everything's going to be smooth and flat. Then, I'm going to switch over to these sticks. I'm going to go to the next one, which would be a thousand grit. You can use sandpaper, but I don't have the sandpaper out right now. I want to kind of show how these work. They're different types. And so, you can get right up against the chrome trim without taking off any detail. And at the same time, as I've been doing this, You can see the little bit that I had right up against the door here is gone now. You can see it over here, but I sanded out a lot of that just with these couple of grits of sandpaper. So once you get the uh, that grit done, you go in there with a thousand or twelve hundred grit. Again, get right up by that chrome but don't get on the chrome. I use these sticks to come in it afterwards and clean up the chrome just so it's nice and smooth before I lay down foil. Now from that point, this is all smooth, can't feel any ridges, no nothing. You can see where the repair was made, but it's smooth. This right here is all it needs to do is be washed, Dawn dish soap in warm water. You wash it, you get all of the... Uh, dust, sanding dust and powder and styrene and things. Get all that out of the door jams. I like to use a medium toothbrush on it and that just gets in and gets everything knocked out. And so that right there would be finished. Now I just got these other ones to do of which test body I'm not going to worry about it. But that's typically what I do. If I want to really, really, really 
nice, nice, smooth, baby, smooth as glass finish. I will actually go all the way up to 2,000 and sometimes 2,500 grit paper. But that is very, very, very rarely. I don't even know if 2,500 grit even does anything. But sometimes it's nice just to know that you did that extra little bit. Painting it without primer requires me to have to take care of the body and get it as smooth as I possibly can. And the reason for that is is because once I paint it, it's going to show every little scratch, every little... See all these scratches right here where I didn't really take the time to smooth that down? All of these big, large scratches right there are all going to show up in my paint. So... I would rather turn around and take the time, and that's kind of what your uh, primer is. You put it on there, you sand it down, you see the low spots, and you think, okay, now I have to fix those. This is one way to fix that. This is another way to fix that. Once you get it all sanded up or fixed, then you got to prime it again, then you got to sand it again, and you're doing the whole sanding the whole entire car once for the body. And then again with the primer, then if there's low spots, you got to fix it, then you got to sand it, then you got to prime it, then you got to sand it. And you're looking three, four, or five times of sanding this entire car. And that's a lot of time. That's why I would rather take a quarter of that time and make sure that the plastic and the body is in perfect condition, well, as perfect as you can get it. So that when I spray my paints, it's not going to show any scratches of nicks and marks and low spots and stuff. And that's going to produce an even bigger, better shine than if I turn around and sand this four different times with primer and all that stuff. So it's also the same way that you, when you get done with your like enamels and lacquers where you go in there and you wet sand it, same thing. You just sand it till it turns gray. If you see any dark spots or shiny spots, that lets you know that's a low spot in the clear coat. So you got to keep sanding that down with that 400 grit pad or paper, whatever you're using. Once you get that completely smooth to where there's nothing, then you turn around and 600 grit, 800 grit, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500. And the more you do it, the shinier and shinier that gets because it's taking out them imperfections to get the light rays to shine wrong through it. So... That's it. That's how you do it. You know, 22 minutes and there's some explanations. Typically to do this whole thing would take me maybe 30 minutes for this whole area because I would have put in a couple more spots. But that's my way that I do things. There's other ways to do them. Other people have other videos. Check out uh, Styrene Junkie. He's got ways to do it. Chris Cortell has talked about it in Classic Classic 101 and Dr. Cranky and stuff. A lot of people out there that have ways of doing this and stuff, when it comes down to it, it's pretty much the same process, just different products. So I appreciate you tuning in, and we will get another tutorial coming up here shortly. Chris Chapman, Rusty Nuts Model Shop. Y'all have a great day. Bye.